I'm Pippa and um, I'm here to show you how to use SPSS, lucky you. Um, in this video I'm going to go through how to enter your data, so that's going to be how to put in things like your demographic data, so just general stuff you've got about your data, things like age, names of participants, stuff like that. And then I'm going to go through, this is the hard part, well actually it's not, after this video you'll be fine, but this is probably what you think is the hard part now. How to enter your data for independent measures and repeated measures or related measures. So once you've got the hang of it, you'll be fine. So don't worry, at the end of this video, it won't be an issue anymore. So we're just going to go through, and first of all, I'm going to put a demographic variable in. So I'm going to use participant number as my demographic variable. You can also put things like age and gender in. So as you can see in here, I write my, my name of my variable, participant. I'm just going to show you. If you try and put a space in here, computer will say no. So no spaces or anything in here. If you want to, if you've got a really long variable and you want to condense it down, just put sort of abbreviations, but make sure you understand what they mean, because otherwise, when they come up along the top here, and you're like, which variable is this? You're not going to know. So make sure it still makes sense to you. Okay, so if you want to put the um, the whole thing in with a space, let's make it look nice and neat, a capital letter, you can put that in the label column, and then it comes up in your output and things nicely. And there's only a few things really you need to do for your um, demographic variables. Change your decimals, so here we don't need any decimal points, just use your arrows up and down. And then we're going to go along and change our measure. Right, this says scale at the moment. Although this is a number, it's not actually scale data, it's nominal data, it's a category, so it's just the name of something, this is just the label that I've given to the participants. If you want it to be scale data, it needs to be something that actually is relatable. It's also called interval data. So imagine you had a ruler, and um, along the ruler, each point along the ruler is one centimetre away from the next point. So the intervals are always exactly the same along. That's what you have to have to try and work out if it's interval data. Just think, if I had X amount, would that be exactly half or double this amount? So time-wise, a minute is exactly double 30 seconds, uh, so reaction times, that would be scale data. Anything that's actually relatable to something in the outside world is usually scale data. You've also got ordinal data, which is rankings data, so if you had a rating scale, um, that would be ranking data, ordinal data, and yeah, it's not really too difficult once you've got the hang of it. And then, so I'll go through, we're in variable view at the moment, switch across to data view, so you can see I've got my row my row here which counts as one person or one case because as you can see participant number one all of their data will come across in this row so I'll say we've got 10 participants in this study I'm from a psychology background so I'm going to use participants and people as my kind of cases but this is really relevant to anything you do if you were doing rock samples if you were doing geology or something I don't know why it's doing that it's just having a fanny SPSS sometimes does do that and no amount of tutoring will get you around that, it's just something it does. But yeah, just scroll up and down if it does that and it'll usually put them back in again. Um, so yeah, you could have no names, probably not names, numbers of rocks along here or something if you were doing geology. I don't know. But um, in each column, you've got your different variable. So whatever you enter here will come up here. Okay, so this is going to be important when we're working out how to enter data for independent and repeated designs. So for your independent measures, switch to variable view. For independent measures, you need to have a variable called, say, condition. So this is going to be like your independent variable. Each independent variable will have its own row here, which will be a column here. So uh, in an independent design, that just means that your cases have either done one condition or the other, no, no one's repeated any of them, that would be repeated measures. Yeah, they're not actually, you know, the names are actually quite sensible. So, um, I'll use an example. I'll say, I've got 10 participants, and they all did a study on caffeine and reaction time. So they've done a task, and we're seeing whether, if they've had caffeine, it affects their reaction time, compared to if they haven't had caffeine. So in independent, half our participants are going to have had caffeine, half of them haven't. Which, so then I'll go to values and I'll label my conditions. So caffeine, no caffeine. It's got 
decimal place there. I'm going to take that out just because it annoys me. It doesn't actually matter. But So this is going to be nominal data as well because obviously these are the names of the categories, the names of the independent variable. And then in an independent design, you then have your dependent variable as another column. So reaction time. So I'll write RT here because remember, can't do spaces. So react. Oops, sorry, reaction time. That can have some decimals maybe, that would make sense. And we don't need to put any values in for that because that's just going to be one one, um, one de like measure you're going to put in each one. So this is going to be scale data because it's a time and it's actually measured. So if we come across to data view, you'll see that I've got condition, reaction time. So I've got a column for my independent variable and a column for my dependent variable. So I'm going to go through, and remember I called them 1 and 2, so my first 5 will say I've done condition 1, second 5 I've done condition 2, is that 5? Yep. So then if you come across here, you can press this button here, and this switches between the label and the number. This button in older versions of SPSS is a luggage tag, they've changed it, but it's around the same place on the top bar up here, it's not too difficult to find. So yeah, then you can see what participant they've done, what condition they're in, and now let's type in their reaction times. So, I'm just going to make these up. These can all have got four, and these all got two. Woo, you're quicker. Oh, that'll probably be the other way around, actually, but this wasn't a very good study, apparently. <laughs> Either way, you can see you've got your dependent variable and your independent variable. And so then if we do repeated measures designs, I won't delete these, I'll leave them in so you can see them. Rather than having um, one with values, you're just going to have your independent variables all as separate variables in here. So I'll write caffeine. Oh, and no caffeine. Oh, no. Almost did the dreaded mistake. See, even when you've been using SPSS for like five years, you still try and put spaces in there and it still bleeps at you and says no it's like all right two beans right this is going to be scale data and you'll see why now because we're here we've got the condition and we've given it the name of caffeine or no caffeine here our conditions are actually inside these cells we're not going to write which condition they're in we're going to put their reaction time let's just give these some different ones for each for each condition so you can see your dependent variable, you don't have a row for here, your dependent variable is inside the cell for each variable. So if you come across here, if we were to just look here, we've got independent measures where you've got your condition as a value and then your dependent variable as its own column and then in repeated measures you've got your two independent variables or however any Min, sorry, uh, well, that was bosh. <laughs> However many independent variables you've got as column titles and the dependent variable for each one respectively goes into the cells. And that's pretty much it. Uh, another helpful tip, if you have all your data already in a table in Excel or Word, whatever, and it's in columns or set out already so you've got it in a table where the numbers go down like this, yeah you don't actually have to copy each one across. It took me a while to figure this out. You can copy and paste across. Yeah, I was quite annoyed when I found out about two years later that you could actually do that. So save you some time. Golden rule, don't put, don't put spaces in here and copy and paste your variables across rather than typing it in. That would save you loads of time. And that's pretty much how you enter your data. It's really not that difficult once you've got the hang of it. You just remember IVs are separate in repeated and our values in independent and the DV is a variable in its own right in independent and it's inside the cells under each IV for repeated measures designs. Thanks for watching, hope you aren't struggling too much with the rest of SPSS. If you are, check out one of our other videos and hopefully it'll all be fine. Thanks, bye!